And here's the bird's eye view of that other spline. So as you can see, and it's, it's in a much different place than the first one. So this has allowed us to sweep in to the worst part of the break with the thickest part of the spline. And this one, as you see, goes much further up into the headstock. It was the way this one broke, and this is why I felt it was important to film this, especially for the last dozen tech deck owners that have their NSKs now. The reason this is so much different than just dropping a plunge router in, moving on a straight line and then pulling it out, is because all three surfaces, the two walls and the entire floor, are all long grain surface. All six surfaces, when you count the other spline, are all long grain contact. And this is why this joint is so strong. In a half a century of full-time guitar repair, I thought I'd seen it all. When I see this type of damage, uh, this doesn't happen by a guitar falling off a stand. Somebody must have stepped on this guitar. Because all four of the potentiometers, volume tone, volume tone, were basically mashed into the face of the guitar. I mean, how does that happen? I mean, this is, a, this is deliberate vandalism. You can see where all this cracking here. I mean, it's just the whole top is shattered. So I'm basically skim routing the face of the guitar and then I'll inlay solid mahogany to restore all the structural integrity and then the whole thing will be blown in black. So I've got my kind of multi-use aluminum plate you've seen in other videos. In order to get to this outside edge the only thing I could do is underneath here there's hockey puck slices with two-sided tape and that's it and then I've got my canvas straps through the cinch hook here basically pulling this thing down and two-sided tape again to just confine that space so you can see where the damage is. just had to bring everyone into the loop on this to kind of explain what I had to do to correct this. One of the advantages of, of switching over to canvas uh, versus leather on the, uh, the string tech straps now length is limitless so I've got a strap that's big enough that basically comes up and over and then hooks on to the frame on the other side so this acts as a counterweight here pulling the neck down I've got the waist of the Les Paul is tucked between those rails so there's our second skim route I've skim routed the inside of that cavity because I will be veneering that as well. There are a couple of pieces that broke off that I've just used that hot hide glue to glue them back into place. I'm going to let this whole thing set till tomorrow and then we'll veneer the inside of the cavity and we'll be done as far as woodworking goes. Well I've programmed my MCC machine to uh, make this cut. So the cut's already made but I just wanted to show you before I pull it all apart how I ended up setting up to do this cut is it's over the top but it works it's safe I flick the switch knowing that it's gonna make a perfect cut that's what counts making the cuts the smallest part of the job of course that takes a couple seconds but setting up the guitar so that it's held safely and in the most advantageous position of course is the trickiest part of the job this flat surface of the hockey puck rested on the angled headstock. I pushed it up under the plate until the plate was supported. I just put a slip of double-sided tape on here. It might seem kind of overkill, but you know something? If you had to program a CNC machine, you'd spend days trying to duplicate what I just did. I basically cut a curved surface on the bottom and cut out relief cuts for the frets, and that gave me a flat surface to put my plate on. And this is the cut, that right angle cut, that we went to all that trouble setting up to make. Our little mahogany filler piece. We're using plastic tape because hide glue doesn't stick to plastic. 
Now we can get on to the finish.